brain-derived neurotropic factor. This is a member of the neurotropin family. It is a molecule that goes up into the brain and actually acts like brain fertilizer for two areas of the brain that actually have neuron cell division. For many years, it was thought that you know the neurons you're born with, you just gradually lose them with age and you gradually lose cognition as you get older. But we found that there's actually two places where we have neurogenesis where we have neural stem cells that can actually become contributing neurons in the brain. One of the places is found in the subventricular zone. We have the ventricles. Underneath the ventricles, we have the subventricular zone. That's one place of neurogenesis. Those cells tend to migrate to the olfactory cortex and play a role in olfaction learning. So, you know, associating memories with smells. I'm not so concerned about that one. But what I'm really excited about is the neurogenesis that takes place in the hippocampus. We have our temporal lobes on the medial part, kind of deep into the temporal lobes. We have the hippocampus. And the hippocampus plays a huge role in our memories and making new memories and learning. So if we can get some neurogenesis going on there, that's going to be huge, especially episodic memory, being able to remember things you did, like what did you eat for breakfast, you know, a vacation you went on. Uh, spatial memories, being able to navigate through a grocery store and backtrack, especially um, forming new memories. So people that have their hippocampi removed, maybe for epilepsy, they can't. They have amnesia. They can't form. They can't take short-term memories and consolidate them into long-term memories. And so, if we can get some increased neuronal division going there, then this is going to be huge. So inside the dentate gyrus. So this is the hippocampal formation. We have three parts, the dentrate gyrus, the cornu ammonis, that's kind of subdivided into these four parts, the subiculum, and then we have this plate area that's in proximity to it, has a functional role to it, but it's not really technically part of the hippocampus formation, is the parahippocampal gyrus. So let's zero in to the dentate gyrus. There's a granular layer in there. Right below that, it's called the subgranular zone. That's where the neurogenesis takes place. What increases this neurogenesis? Exercise. What's the best form of exercise? We'll get to that. So um, exercise, there's a couple reasons why exercise increases neurogenesis. One is it increases lactate. Uh, so exercises that tend to increase lactate more could possibly increase BDNF more. That's where my research is going. So high intensity exercise, that's gonna increase lactate that's going to be a great exercise to increase BDNF and therefore uh, memory in the hippocampus. Blood flow restriction exercise. Exerc there's studies that's showing that this is, these are neck and neck. With the, ex the excellent thing about blood flow restriction exercise is as we get older, our joints can't tolerate high loads and high intensity exercise as much. So we can put these blood flow restriction cuffs on the proximal joints of the shoulders and hips and exercise and build up this metabolic stress that turn on the same metabolic pathways as high load exercise and it also generates a lot of lactate and so lactate is going to cross the blood brain barrier it's going to increase bdnf um, there was actually a study by schiffer et al where they took eight males they infused them with lactate and measured the bdnf and they proportionally rose together another way it, another mechanism through which exercise increases BDNF is when we exercise, our muscle cells generate myokines, especially irisin and cathepsin B. These myokines will actually go up, cross the blood-brain barrier, increase gene expression of BDNF. BDNF goes to the subgranular zone of the dentate gyrus and stimulates neurogenesis. So. Other things have shown to increase BDNF, meditation, deep sleep, omega-3s, but the big one is exercise. So um, I'm trying to figure out what's the best exercise so that we can stave off diseases like Alzheimer's disease, which preferentially cause neuronal loss in, this, in the hippocampus. So this might be a great way to have Alzheimer's prevention. So um, this is exciting new research, and hopefully I can make a contribution here.